First, you're going to do the minutes, though? I don't think oh, there we go. Good evening, and welcome to the April 26th meeting of the Planning Policy Commission. Tonight, we are going to have a public hearing on the proposed amendments to the transfer of development rights for Issaquah Highlands, and then a discussion on Old Town Plan. But first, I need a motion to approve the minutes of April the 12th. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of April 12th, 2018. Second. Any discussion, changes? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. So with that, I'm gonna turn the, turn the microphone over to uh, Trish and tell us about development rights. This is one of those interesting projects that you've seen before. This is part of the end of the uh, Isquah Highlands Development Agreement that you saw in September. And council finally adopted the replacement regulations just recently in March. And part of what the regulations they adopted said was there were changes in the Issaquah Highlands part of the transfer of development rights. And so because they didn't wanna do that then, they sent it back to us to, so it's not completely a rubber stamp, but it's sort of like the cleanup that we do, the cleanup picture at the end of the game. That So um, it's a very narrow um, amendment, and that's to make sure that the end of development agreement regulations matches with the transfer of development rights um, regulations. And so with that, I'm gonna give you a super fast history of transfer of development rights, because they're fascinating. They started before 2006, when the county asked if we would take some from Mitchell Hill and put them in the Highlands, and we did. And we thought it was so fascinating that we wanted our own um, internal transfer of development rights program, not just taking them from the county, to take them internally. So we built our own in 2006. And you can see from the map that all the red areas are receiving sites, meaning they could take transfer of development rights and be more dense or more tall or more um, impervious surface. Or, um, and the green areas are those that were sending them. They were usually either critical area, uh, land that had critical area near it, or there were other issues with it that we were trying to incentivize them not trying to build on them, but um, letting them have some um, um, value to not develop. And so then in 2015, we uh, did some amendments, Lakeside Development Agreement was coming in, and so there was a change uh, with Lakeside coming in and Talus coming out in 2015. And then this would be the third set of amendments to um, narrow it even further to not have all of Issaquah Highlands be um, an, a receiving site, but only the very small area um, by the retail area. So that's the history. And this is what the new proposed map would look like in a big way, not just squishy, but the, um, I just thought it was important to see what the comparison was with all of them. And the, the actual changes, and this is the part that made me sort of laugh, is the amendments are that they can have no additional residential density, they can have no additional building height, and they can have no additional impervious surface. So my question, and I'm sure your question is, what do they get then? What's the big deal? Well. That's a good question. The big deal is that next year, they were told, Highlands was told that they're gonna do neighborhood visions. I know, it kind of is exciting, isn't it? We're gonna vision again. And if, they, if the parcels are on this map, sort of this pre-visions map, those would be the most likely parcels that would be able to have perhaps a higher zoning or a higher density when they go through that process next year. But at this point, they don't get anything special other than they're sort of a leg up for the discussions next year. So it's that narrow of an so, amendment. So right now, how many TDRs are out there that have been earned but not used? I couldn't say. I know that Ish. there's... A couple hundred or... Mm, the ones for Park Point were used by Bellevue College and so I, I don't know. Okay. I'm not the one that, that does the bank. But if I'm if I'm a developer who owns CDRs, I basically just can't, I just won't be able to use them for like a year or two if this passes and then we're waiting for oh, something. Oh, only if you're in the Highlands. In the Highlands, you already have all your zoning cap, you have all your entitlement, you don't, at this point, you don't need any TDRs to do anything. Oh, but you, you, but, so, but you can still use your 
TDRs in Central Issaquah. Right, but if you were in any of the other red areas, there's still code on the books that tells you exactly how to use them. But uh, so, 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 sorry, go forward to the, the, that side. So the no additional density height and impervious service, is that for just the Only highlands? Only the highlands. Only Issaquah highlands. And okay, that's so in the yellow. That's the part that we added, that last category. If it's um, urban village SF, urban village MF, urban village um, community, that whole last line is... Um, for Issaquah Highlands, because it used to say other zones could have up to 36 dwelling units extra per acre, and so we, um, this amendment says that no, you don't get anything extra. You have so to I, go through the process next year. So I can still get all this, all these benefits at the Central Issaquah receiving yes. sites. Okay, so yes. that, that's not going away. Yeah, there's okay. no changes to that. And so the other charts that are also as explicit. They can have no, the building heights is on the one side, they don't get any additional building heights, and they don't get any uh, additional impervious because they're already allowed 100%. So the only real change, other than clarifying that they don't get anything yet, is the map, is the map is a lot smaller. It's a rather odd amendment, but it's one of those cleanups that are necessary. Are there additional questions? Precise. What allows them to do anything in a year then? What, what, what's the mechanism? If they don't get anything now, then what triggers right. some a year from now? Well, now this is the uh, map that was approved in the new regulations to end the development agreement. And this is called the, the zoning cap map. And all the numbers in there that I know they're tricky to see on my screen. They already have all that entitlement already, so um, changing the map wasn't taking anything away from them because they already got it in these regulations. The only thing the map does is that when they do, when we and they do the vision, visioning next year, there might be a chance that the zoning, that they might be able to increase the zoning capacity next year is what, when the, the council was talking to the neighborhoods, that that process, this is sort of like a bookmark saying, when we talked about this, we thought this little area by the um, retail center might be, should maybe qualify for up zoning, but we're not gonna do that now. We're gonna do everything just the same as what they have and then do that in another process. So it's just, just tentative for the zone, waiting on zoning potential. Right, it's like a bookmark because it took two years to close out the development agreement. They didn't want to start talking about up zones or different actual entitlement because it was already pretty complex just to Thank end you. the development agreement. So Trish, okay. do, yes. how does this affect the Lakeside Industries? Not at plot? all. Because they have a development agreement. Correct, and they're now, not they're they listed. Part of the end. They're listed as an area that could be a TDR receiving site. Yes, they are, because they have requ they have required they have a requirement in their development agreement that in one of their future phases they need to use d um, TDRs. They need to consume some. Okay. But that's separate than the Highlands. They're a totally separate development agreement. Okay, so this is listed as a red receiving site only because that's in their development agreement. It's already yeah. They are technically not going to be prohibited by these changes. Right, they were not okay. touched during, they were, they are not affected at all by these changes, proposed changes. Right. Any other questions? Do you want to open up the public hearing? I am going to open the public hearing at 6.45 and ask if anybody is uh, seeing nobody, I'm going to close the public hearing at 6.46 and go on to our next uh, discussion, which is Old Town. Hang on, well, we, yeah, we need to vote on it. We need a motion. What? Recommendation? On this, public, on this amendment? Discussion? Recommendation? Oh, okay. We are open to discussion. Do we need a motion to approve the amendment? And then uh, maybe a motion from a Two, three, four. You're an alternate tonight. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're we'll making a motion to uh, approve the TDRs yes. for Highlands. For the Highlands. 
I was looking for additional verbiage by as resident. So I'd like to make a motion to approve the TDRs for the Highlands. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Now you can go to the next one. The TDRs as written are as changed as, as amended. Yeah. in the packet. And yours, I, yours is called up already. Okay. That's what I was looking for. Okay. Hello. So just for discussion tonight, uh, there were a few things we presented this last week, and there were a few things that you all asked us to do, so we'd like to sort of do a little housekeeping, make sure that we've taken care of things that you all wanted us to do before we bring it back for a public hearing, see if there's anything else that we need to do to clean up the plan for that. First thing you asked us to do was to bring back the downtown streetscapes conceptual plan and the phases so that you could all could include that in the action plan and look at what's proposed and see if there are any changes that you wanted to make to that. So I'm gonna go over it how it's written in the plan and then you guys can discuss it when I'm done. So phase one is to complete the front street streetscape from Sunset to Alder. So they did stormwater improvements a while ago on three quarters of that section. They didn't do half of the west side of the street. They pulled out all the trees, they put in new stormwater, they put in new sidewalks, widened the sidewalks where they could and that was it. So the first part is to, the first proposed part was to replace the street trees, add new plantings, benches, receptacles, and bike racks, replace the sidewalk on the west part that they didn't do, and uh, replace the trees there as well, and then do a feasibility study for a pedestrian scramble at front and sunset. Mm -hmm. So what is currently going to happen as part of phase one that is in the 2018 budget is that only the trees that were removed during the stormwater work a few years ago are going to be replaced along with some benches and receptacles. And that is done, that's being done because of money, the funding. So that's, that's what's actually gonna happen. Phase two is doing the Alder Festival, yes. Can I go back please? So. So, so phase one, there's four bullets on what we wanted to do, and phase two is what we're doing. Yes. So the two things. No, not that, phase two is what we're doing. The second. So, yeah, sorry, the second, phase one is yeah. what we're actually going to do. So the two things that got dropped: the feasibility study and doing the, redoing the sidewalks and stormwater on the west northwest portion of Front Street. Okay. Are those being just pushed to phase two? Being pushed to f a phase. I, I don't know if I think the phases are probably going to change a little bit now. Okay. You all so, get to help with that? Sure. Because I was just saying, I didn't, I didn't see the feasibility study on the next page. Yeah, I didn't put it in anywhere. So okay, so I'm, you didn't you didn't What move I'm showing you are okay. what are what are the what the phases that were adopted. But I just I wanted to show you this change because this is what's actually being done, which leaves some of phase one still to be discussed. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So phase two is the Alder Festival Street, which means acquisition of some right away, which is really the sidewalks are on private property, so we'd have to acquire that. It means adding some street trees and some festival lighting, and that's it, creating a, creating a festival street. It would be opened to the uh, public. It would be used for, you know, you could drive on it most of the time. It will just be closed for festivals, for parties. Phase three is the front street ski, streetscape improvements, doing the same thing that was done between Sunset and Alder, only between Alder and Dogwood. So those three phases are phases that were looked at um, financially. So there is a budget or a proposed budget attached to each of those. Lastly are the future phases. These are other things that were discussed in the plan that could be done, don't have any budgeting attached to them, but that doesn't mean that they couldn't potentially be moved up as part of the front Old, old Town plan. So the actual implementation of the, of the scramble, if it's feasible, make Front Street Street Escape improvements from Dogwood all the way to Gilman. Have public-private par partnerships to install parklets, create a creek overlook at Dairy Cold, which would definitely be a private-public partnership. And street improvements at the hatchery, which are involved trees and seating and that kind of thing, also public-private. Public-private or public-public? Public, well, public-public, it's owned by the state, but 
It's not us, it's not all us, so that was what was intended by that. So I, if you all wanna ask questions and talk about this part now. I do have a question. Um, as far as the street, um, streetscapes with the landscaping and the trees, being that we are gonna be hitting this at multiple phases, have we asked if the public would be interested in, in donating to a tree? If they would be interested in donating a tree? Donating a tree or like a charity type drive where people can purchase a tree for a cause? We have not, no. That might be something that we could use or um, help raise revenue for maybe a, a local charity, food bank or something like that. What is the funding source for this, just the general CIP? Usually, I don't know what it is for, fa for phase one for what's being done this year. I don't know if it's both grants and city money. The, usually a grant, grants pay for the bulk of it. Okay, so, the, the, so my second question is like, what was the in, intended funding for all three phases, grant funding? In, grant funding, okay. and then we give what we can. Impact, yeah. So, so um, all of these plans look wonderful with lots of trees and stuff. Is are any of the trees impacting the flow of traffic? The, any of the proposed trees or any of the existing trees? Yes. Not that it was discussed during the planning process. No. But park, but parking will be. Will parking be. will be slightly impacted because there are some additional bulb outs or places for pedestrians for, to do uh, safer crosswalks. So some of that is impacted. Not much. I think it's two spaces along the entire front street. For those people who can't find a parking place, <laughs> eliminating any parking is, is uh, problematic. We gotta get them to walk. Yeah. So in the plan, there's a few um, ways that they were going to handle enhanced crossings so yes. that there were treatments on the ground, particularly at Alder Street for the Festival Street. Is that still part of one of those phases? That is still. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think it's a phase, I think it's phase two, maybe phase one. Oh, it would be part of phase two. I think I'd have to look at the detailed budget, but I think it's part of phase two. Yeah. So was that included in one of those bullet points of? Well, I didn't get into the details of exactly, okay. yeah. I was just trying to outline for you all. It's in the packets. Okay. But. So I, I'm sure it's in here somewhere, and I probably have read it, but what, when is phase one, two, and three? What year is it? Uh, really gonna phase, phase one was initially gonna be 2018, but it was proposed to be the full phase one, 2018, 19. And like I said, only part of that's being done. And the rest of those, I think Keith said last time, have now been pushed out to six years plus. For the rest of phase one and two and three? That's as far as that's I understand, yes. Said? Okay. When he said the rest, I assume right. all, yes. So why pushed out so far? I mean, I know you're saying funding, but it sounds like we, we came into this with the expectation we had funding, and then what happened? I don't know that you go into it every time with the expectation that you have funding. Mm -hmm. I think you plan something and work for the funding. Right. And the the city council, because those trees had been taken out and the businesses and the residents wanted it, the trees back, they said, let's get that piece done this year. Let's be sure they have their trees back this year. So is this something that needs to be brought up with council as far as earmarking and creating the urgency for the budget? Is this something that we have any power on? Well, that was, as I understood it, the purpose of this discussion was that if you all right. wanted to see something moved up in the action plans, we move it up, this goes to council and it can be discussed there. Right. We'd like to see it all moved up and done. <laughs> that was what I was gonna <laughs> say. Yeah. I, I, I think one thing is also, presumably a lot of money and time and effort was put together to put in a lot of design detail. And so I think it's important to not you know, let this go stale and mm -hmm. then create a new plan five years from now that requires the same amount of money. Agreed. I don't, 
as I'm thumbing through it, I, I see no reason to meddle with all the great design work. It's just a question of trying to find the financial bandwidth to start, start knocking some of these things out. Right, and this wasn't to discuss the design work or what was done and, you know, do we really want those trees here or the Festival Street? It's looking at the proposed phases and looking at the future phases as well that I included in there to see if there's anything that you all would like to see, even though it's six years, in, six years out, say, no, this is a smaller piece, maybe the parklets. You know, those are pushed out. Well, They're a public-private partnership. They cost less money. They can be temporary. Maybe you say, let's push that into 2019 and get that done. So, Kristen, this printout is organized by section. Is there is there a part of the a part of the printout that has the has the phasing? Documented? There is. It's in the back. It's it's in the back. Let me see. So, page 47 uh, of our I packet. Uh, I know it doesn't really have. Is that page? Oh, I see. Okay. 47 or 620 has the ah. estimated design and construction cost that shows the phases. Okay. And right. so that's, what's, that's what you walked us through so, there? So, yeah, 6.0 okay. is the implementation. And then after that, the two or three pages after that, break it down into budget budget, and what's in each mm -hmm. of those budgets. This even is, isn't as detailed as what I have. But, yeah, it breaks it down a little bit there. Is the... Side thought, is the overlook at um, Dairy Gold, is that in the park plan? Not that I'm aware of, no, because Parks at Parks is more concerned with, Parks focuses on public spaces, and that's on a private property. Because what, what was talked about during the plan is doing it in their parking lot. So those would be improvements made by the city and Dairy Gold with, you know, Dairy Gold grants access. And okay. I think Go back to number one. Phase one? Yeah, phase one. Oops. Okay, so the tree, I'm looking at the trees. Um, okay, and then go to phase two. So, unless you had a thought. <laughs> well, I okay. see on phase two, we're also adding more trees. So is it a, a issue? What's the issue with the trees? Why couldn't all the trees be done in phase one? I think those well, are just on Alder Street as yeah. part of the Festival Street, right. phase two. Ah, okay. So they need to do the demolition on the Festival Street before they consider putting in the right. trees. It takes time. More than just planting the tree, it's actually mm -hmm. infrastructure. Right, right. you get the sidewalk, you'd build the sidewalks out, and it looks like it's gonna be more of a, I've just lost the word. Um, but one of those roads without without sidewalks. Without the curbs, so promenade. you should open yeah. it up. Yeah, kind yeah, of a yeah, promenade it's kind got of thing. A, it's like a Danish Vunerf. word. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yes, a Vunerf, yeah, thank you. Vunerf. 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 More like Whatever a Vunerf, so there is construction involved. A Vunerf. A Vunerf. that. Yeah. I've never heard of it. It's like, um, what's the street in downtown Seattle that they tried to do it? Well, Pike Place has it, but Bell Street, yeah, they Bell, Street Bell Street is yep. probably the most modern yeah. version we have. Uh -huh. It kind of works. Yeah. Yep. Okay. But the idea is you blur the We've line. We've got one between. in the Highlands right yeah, by the movie the theater. Highlands. Right, yeah. So my idea of actually maybe raising revenue for the trees may not work, but we, could, mm -hmm. we still might be able to use that idea to help raise funds for charity. Sure. Mm -hmm. So speaking of speaking of funding mechanisms, so on page forty-eight, whatever the the page we're all looking at, the six B and six C. Mm -hmm. So it specifically calls out. So there's there, there's federal grants and state grants, and then there's a lid. Mm -hmm. Do we want to talk about a lid? Was that considered in prior years? Because I look at this, and this is this is a lot of these are a lot of nice things, mm -hmm. but it's a lot of quality of life, which tells me that something like a lid makes sense. Because what you're doing is you're really. Value. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're at, you're adding a lot of value to the local neighborhood in terms of property value, right? And like, it's nice for the rest of the community, but this seems like something that that's very conducive for um, a local improvement district. And something else that needs to be done, and the reason this was in here is that a fiscal study needs to be done to see, find out what some of the best funding mechanisms are. Mm -hmm. So a lid, there they would look at a lid and talk to property owners and see if that's one of their best options. This was just a list of possibilities. Right. Yeah, okay, well it seems like if you're talking about what to pull forward, it seems like that would be the right thing to do first, okay. is to identify a permanent source of funding. Okay. And similarly, the step 7A collaboration with the DIA. Mm -hmm. 
kind of surprised nobody from DIA is here today <laughs> to talk about something that could make a big difference to the downtown. Right, well, I think they're hoping that the phases go ahead as planned. I'm not sure. That, yes, and um, if they were here, they could discuss that and put more pressure on it, which might get that to move forward. Right. right. I'm looking for community engagement. So thoughts on the phasing? Thoughts yeah, on anything? My on? general thought is, and this may be contrary to what others think, but I guess just like at a high level, I, I would probably prefer to prioritize the streetscaping stuff, like the, the, left, the stuff we haven't done in phase one and what's mentioned in phase three over the festival street. Okay. Just as a general thought. Um, I mean, I, I'm excited about the festival street, but we, we're pretty good at festivals already. We can shut down the street and have a festival. So I think the streetscape improvements are a higher priority for me. I mean, but I want it all to happen. But that's, that's just the amazing. My concern with phase three is that it's $2.3 million to do the front street between Alder and Dogwood. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's going to be difficult to propose. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas perhaps the 1.3 with the festival street could get some of the downtown association behind it and you could really get it done. Yeah. Get something done. Yeah. What makes all the dogwood so expensive? Is just is it just a longer stretch of road? I think it's a longer stretch of road, and at the same time, while we've just did the stormwater here between Sunset and Alder, it hasn't been done between Alder and Dogwood. So everything that's already been done will have that's to right. be tacked on to this project. Okay, so there's some additional right. stormwater. There's water additional you, yes. You know, bread and butter type. And there's no irrigate. You know, they put in the. Oh, I can't think of words. They, not the irrigation, but they put in like the valves Rain or the in. conduits. They put in the conduits for the irrigation in this piece, which they don't have already up there. So there's additional work. Is there oh. anything in here that is safety related? Anything in here that city fees? Safety. Oh, safety. So if, I'm, if you're looking at priority, anything here that would enhance safety? The crosswalks help to build up safety. I, I think p pulling those forward makes more sense than things that are more facilitating comfort. Okay. How are you um, going to do that without the sidewalks? Well, no, you can and put in a crosswalk without improving the neighboring sidewalk. Um, you can, but the, you only want to try and disturb things once. And if you um, go in, and I'm not an engineer, but if you go in and you do a crosswalk, but the intent is to eventually widen those sidewalks, you'd like to widen the sidewalks and do the crosswalks at the same time so that you're not doing it twice. Okay. And you're probably right, but... For, the, for, for notes, I think if, if there's if okay. there's anything if there's anything safety related that can be pulled forward in a safety first financially where possible, yeah, okay. I mean, in a financially reasonable way, then then okay. Well, yeah, no, yeah, no, I, I hear what you're saying. It, it doesn't make sense to pull some of these projects apart. But you could do the crosswalks in the phase one area up to Alder potentially, and just make sure that that those treatments are done there. That would be a part of it, yes, of phase one. Okay. Timeline, uh, we're looking at phase one, 2018. So that, is, that mean phase two would be 2019 and then mm -mm. No. phase three, 2020, no. or just when? That was originally proposed, but now they've been pushed out six years plus. But you can recommend. Yeah, exactly. That's, and that's what this is for. If you want to see any pieces of this, about. including the future phases that don't have budgets attached to them, pushed up, like parklets or work with fishery, fish hatchery, any of those. You can propose to move those up. Uh, okay. The reason why I'm suggesting issues with the uh, years is because I'm foreseeing that we will likely have an economic decline soon, in which case funds may become restricted, mm -hmm. and these projects will get pushed out. And I'm saying that because we're a cyclical market, and right now the, the economy is humming along, but in two to three years from now, we might start seeing a downturn, which would be reasonable. Um, and if these projects are getting pushed out three to six years, that's probably going to be in that in that downturn, which means they may get pushed out indefinitely. So do you see anything on the phases that you would like to push up All before the six years? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would like to push up the Gilman Gateway Welcome to Issaquah sign at the front. I think that has a high impact and it's something that 
many, many people have said they want to see. However, I would like to comment for that, that it should be positioned to acknowledge the fact that the entrance to Old Town is now moved. By well, that's where it years. is. It's the corner of. If you look, if you look at the way it's positioned on the on the, this might just be updating the the diagram, but it looks like the entrance is turning onto Front Street, and it should be positioned to acknowledge that Old Route Ten is also a part of, yeah, okay. Old Town now. Yep, I, I think it's on that corner, welcoming people as they're coming off of the freeway. Sure. I think it's going to go in where it's feasible, <laughs> um, for site and uh, safety, sure. so. Anything? Yeah, that Carl. seems like, oh, I was, sorry. Boy, Carl, you're, go ahead. You're on a roll. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, like, I, I, I agree that that seemed like something that was distinct that could be done okay. mm -hmm. on its own. Okay. But I think the takeaway is we all want it all done, so I think looking at funding is probably more important than trying to, than the, yeah. than the sequencing. Okay. You know, I think that uh, the people who, you, who put this plan together actually looked at the process of what can be done, when it can be done, what it should be done, in what order. So I, I, don't, um, I don't see anything that besides a sign that you can just whip out and, and do. I'm, I'm not for redoing. I think it's a waste of money to, to, to redo some, some of this stuff. So um, my only thing is, I don't want it put in a drawer and forgotten. I want it somehow to make sure that it is top shelf. Um, and if money is available before six years, that the, the council looks at it and, and processes higher than six years from now. Okay. I'm going to support what she says. I, I agree. Um, but I'd actually like to make it a, a step forward and actually put your commitments on here and say 2018, 2019, 2020, or something of that sort. So we actually have a, we're specifying some sort of timeline. Otherwise, I'm afraid that these things won't get baked. Because in the action part of the plan, you can say, for example, mm -hmm. that from 2018 to 2019, all of phase one, maybe the next year, all of phase two and three. It can be as simple mm -hmm. as that to, to place them on your action items for Old Town. I don't, I don't know how useful it is if it's not funded. Right. Well, I think it's a good idea to put it on there, funded, right. uh, understanding it may be a little bit of an empty gesture. And then I would also add on to phase one the um, funding, the feasibility figure study. out the, well, not even the feasibility study on that particular area, but figuring out the funding. Um, because that, you know, putting that as a priority rather than just saying, this is when we think it should be done. Mm -hmm. So the, I haven't seen it yet, I haven't taken a look, but the TIP is coming to you in the next month or uh. so. This is a good time to have a discussion with Public Works when they come as well and talk about priorities on the TIP and the Front Street streetscape and plan and making a recommendation there too. It sounds, what a, oh, go ahead. Carl, did you have, did you want to say something? Oh, I did, but it's all right. Go. <laughs> no, it's okay. Carl, Carl. That's okay. Okay, well, I'll say something. I, I think realistically, we can't go, um, you know, phase one in a year, phase two in I, I would say if we spread it out over six years and kind of say two years, so 2019 to 2020 for phase one, 2021 to 2022 and carry it like that, just knowing that it takes time to, you know, to figure out the funding and then to actually implement anything, you can't do that, even that in two years probably, but so I'd say as a bit of a Meet, meet them halfway kind of a gesture. If, if everything was pushed out six years, maybe we could say, well, let's try to accomplish it within six years and, you know, two years per phase. Okay. Kristen, have, has the city done anything in regards to establishing a LID or a BIA? No. What's the process? Not, not in to Front do, Street. What's the process to do that? Does the city initiate that? Mm -hmm. The city would initiate What has it. to be done? Because it seems to me that's where you're going to get your money from. Again, we're relying on grants and stuff. I don't put a lot of faith in that. That's a mm -hmm. crapshoot. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
at the lid or a business improvement area right. is one way that you've got to, you, you can get the money. Mm -hmm. But it seems to me the city should be doing something to initiate that process. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure what the mechanism is to do that. Do you? Right, the city would do the research to find out how much of an increase for all the properties it would be. And, um, and, and you could say to do that to start the lid process at least mm -hmm. in 2018, you, 2019. Do you, do you do that by going out to the businesses with a letter initiating and saying, hey, we're right. looking at doing this? Right. Has and that, has that been and done or who has to initiate no, doing we, that? We would initiate yeah. that. Right. Because, yeah, this is just adopted, and what, last year? This was adopted in, yes, last year, April last of last year, year. So we're just getting started. And Are there any existing lids for those properties that they're already paying on? No, there has been a lid in the past. Yeah, this but, one just went out. Yeah, but this one, it ended not too long, a couple of years ago, a few years ago. Right. For the and are we considering, I know there's some conversation of a parking structure. Right that we're going to address sometime in the future. There's supposed to be parking a study coming up this year. Yeah. Yes, yeah. parking solution. solution. Thank you. Yes. Um, <laughs> that would possibly include a lid. So do we have any concerns that if we talk about a lid for a front street streetscape plan that it would cause problems with getting the parking handled? Well, maybe I had not heard that there was talk of a lid. Um, with the parking structure parking until you just told either. it to me. But I you know, know it's but just the idea that we're gonna have to find funding for that as well. And right. whether or not that comes from the capital improvement or TIB or you know, something, mm -hmm. it's all competing dollars. Right. 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 But and I hadn't heard yet of a lid for well, any mm -hmm. parking solutions. But I had heard obviously because this one's in the adapted plan. I, I think it's important to keep them separate because I think this is even if it's a million or two, this is pretty cheap relative mm -hmm. to building parking. The parking would be a big investment that would mm -hmm. probably involve much more than Old Town. Mm -hmm. okay. Whereas this, I feel like it's just Old Town. It's enough dollars that if you spread it over a couple of years, it's a pretty small lid. I, so, I, I don't, I don't, I, I feel like parking is a big yeah. citywide discussion, not in this we can kind of keep in just the neighborhood. So how about if in the 2018, 2019 action plan, we include, in, include, <laughs> we include, begin discussions about a lid you know, or begin research on cost estimates for a lid and what that would be and work with, you know, if feasible, then work with the property owners. There are better words. Can, it, can, it, be, can it be it's something, can it be a little bit vaguer, but also a little bit more aggressive to say identify. The um, process. I, no, I, I didn't identify a permanent source of funding. Like that, that can be the action is, to, is, is identify funding. And it doesn't matter if it's we put it into the CIP or we decide to roll with grants, or we put in a lid. I don't, I don't want to just be discuss a lid for two yeah. years, and then we don't actually get to implementing it until 2020 and 2021. I would love to see in, in an 18, 19 time frame, the, the city decide how we want to fund this. And you are just talking about phase one, or are you talking about phase two? For, um, I would like to see accomplished in phase one how we're going to fund all the phases. All the phases, okay. And and the, the decision might be that we fund it via the CIP process and it takes eight years, that, that that's fine. But I, I would love to determine how we're going to fund it. We've decided what we want to do and how, and how we're going to do it um, execution-wise, now we have to decide how we're going to do it from a funding standpoint. Okay. And we should we should decide that now so that we can have this not become stale. Okay. So what I I um, didn't like when you said begin the process of discussion. That that doesn't hold. You know there has to be a end. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, uh, decide more, more action oriented. Is, oh, yeah, but I, I you know this is a big process. You're it is. you're creating this lid. You're asking businesses to partake and mm -hmm. pay money for this. So um, it's going to be a long process. You got to work about well, how much is it going to hurt business? How you know do we want businesses in town or not? So all of that has that's a long discussion mm -hmm. of, of things that have to be done. But surely if staff and the, and the mayor and whatnot think lit is worth pursuing, surely we can go through that public process mm -hmm. within like 18 months. Mm -hmm. I've never done it, but I would, 18 months? Sure. <laughs> I, I, engineering usually does that. Okay. So I, we haven't had to do that. So I have another concern that um, I was thinking about, and that is if we go through phase one, two, and three, and they are all, uh, they will all affect Front Street, 
even phase two. Uh, that's a lot of construction. People are gonna get upset because it's long construction cycles. Would there be a net savings if we did everything at the same time? And if we don't have the money to have start the process this year, wait a year or two years until we do a lid or, and we just hit it one shot because we have all the construction vehicles there, we have everything locked off, we're doing it all at the same time. I, again, I'm not an engineer, but there's gotta be a reason they didn't propose to do it all at once. And my right. guess is that it's funding. Right. Which, and, which I think is, is Ron's point. Is, if we go with a lid that you can bond against, right. does it make more sense to just... To do it all. Yeah, do, do all of Front Street just all at once? That's worth looking at when the consultant looks at how much it's gonna cost, you know, looking at combining phases or breaking up phases. That's something that the consultant can look at. Okay. Because whether there would be a savings there or not, I don't know. Well, what that would do was to make people find a different way to go through Front Street for traffic. Mm -hmm. They would have to go 18. They would have to find another way and then you could open up Front Street and traffic would be normal. We start tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you just make it 10 year process. <laughs> Not on the record. <laughs> so at the end of the funding mechanisms section, it says the economic development department staff will need to perform a financial study mm -hmm. to explore these funding mechanisms right. more thoroughly and recommend a funding path. Right. So it sounds like that portion is really what we want brought into phase one and put a focus on figuring mm -hmm. out which of these options. And I don't know about you guys, but I think all of the funding options that they mention, the federal funding, the WASH DOT, or the improvement district or area, I think are all valid and reasonable and should be considered. Mm -hmm. So I have here for 2018, 2019, identify funding sources for all phases. That will be expanded on, but that's okay. Can the commission recommend we look into a lid as like our official initial position, or is that premature? I would suggest having whoever does this. We're going to have a consultant anyway. Look at all of it okay. to see what really is the most reasonable and the most ex attainable. Okay. So we didn't. So the consultants who put this together did not scope in. No. Funding? Okay. No. So I might strengthen that statement mm -hmm. to ask the staff to perform the financial study. What's the difference? Well, she just said consider. I'm just saying, can we put the financial study on the docket? to make sure that we are specifically asking for that, not just a conversation so about it. 2018, 2019, perform a financial study to identify funding for all phases. Does all that right. work? Thank you. Okay. okay. We good? Can we move on? Good. Any more? Nothing else? All right. Oops. So moving on to some of the edits that came up last time. This one was actually ours. We were looking at the last section that said parting thoughts, and we thought, you know, this really belongs up front. So so we moved out of the streetscape and into Old Town? I just did, yeah. Is that okay? Or do you have more? Just like that. No, I just <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I should be flipping it. Okay. My, <laughs> and so we just looked at it and thought this was our edit. We thought parting thoughts belonged up at the top, so we moved part of it to quality of life and part of it to plan framework because it says this plan creates a roadmap. So. And thank you for changing threats to quality of life. Yes, <laughs> that was another one. <laughs> yeah. That had okay. been for a long time. It's like, we're getting rid of that. Yeah. So when I went through the plan, you have, you're not consistent with the E on. Ah, we thought we got them all. Okay. Oh, we thought we got them all. Yeah, I did too. I don't know where it is right now, but. So is it okay. the understanding to take it off? No, the so understanding is to leave it in. put it back Good. in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the next one, what came up, one thing that came up last time and we did this under quality of life is to define cut through traffic. We had one sentence, we've put it into two because they're sort of different things. So vehicular traffic passing through Old Town, and this is just kind of explaining the threats or what's affecting the quality of life. Vehicular traffic passing through Old Town without stopping or without at least an origin or destination within the area 
also known as cut through traffic, is worse than it has ever been. And then we separated out regional traffic caused by growth outside of Issaquah increases congestion on Front and Sunset. So there's fallacy in that. They are stopping and going and stopping and going. <laughs> it's a diff that's a different kind of stopping. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Comments on that one? You good? It's fine. Okay. I was quick, okay. Um, plan edits, there were several things that you asked us to do here. One was to work with the different transit agencies and other providers to add routes, increase frequency of service, and increase service options. That was down in later years, and we moved it up to uh, short term. Prepare an inventory of missing pedestrian and bicycle facilities also moved up, and begin implementing recommendations from the downtown streetscape plan has been added. So there is something about the streetscape plan in the first one, but it's not implement. So 2021 is implementing. It says begin implementing. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here, let's see. Okay. Continue implementing. Uh, Continue implementation of the rec of the downtown well, streets. Uh, okay, here's a question. So we're looking at two different years, 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021. As what was the intention? Ooh. Are we really looking at 2018, 2019 for the phase one? Oh, yeah, you have, you have continue implementing in the printout, short term. Do I? And I just changed it here. Yeah. Okay. Which makes more sense, yeah, you have begin okay. in 1819 and then 2020 you have continued. Okay, all right, so it's right in what I gave you? Yes. I just messed it up here, okay. All right, well then that kind of negates the question. Okay. Can you have a comma after sound transit? Absolutely. Thank you. Oh wait, what did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> Can I add a comma? After, after, sound, after transit. sound transit. Oh, yes. Oxford comma. Yeah. Okay. Trish got that, all right. A couple of others, create and adopt the Neighborhood Redevelopment Infill Toolkit. We just decided we need to create it first. Ensure support and review improvements to internet connectivity and cell service. We clarified this and we moved it up based on our discussion last time. And then create an Old Town Community Garden that was in the last, in the long term, so we moved that up as well to short term. Where? Where? It's number 10 in the short term? No, where? It was the community garden. It where was in the long ter longer term section? We don't section. know where. No, That's she was so physically where it is. <laughs> oh. Don't I don't That's know. I, we have to figure it out. Yeah. Okay. I just I'm, don't know any area that's, well, anyway. So. so, question short term 2020 21 and long term 2020 2021. Oh. Type it, that's right in the it's, printout. It's right 2022 in the printout. to 2025 in the printout. In printout I think that was right. a cut and paste error on my part. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. okay. it's right in the plan. Okay, I thought so. Okay. So longer term, which is beyond 2021. Hmm. Increase mobility options such as the trolley shopping shuttle out of area parking to improve mobility options for Old Town. We added that. Is the trolley running? Yeah. It works. Yeah. This was just it's, an expansion. It doesn't of how often it runs. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't run regularly, but it works. And they would like to increase the amount of time that no, it runs. I've been part of that, yeah. Okay. So there are things that we talked about that we recognize that we haven't addressed yet. One is that we need to add maps. This plan does not have a map in it, so we need to put the maps back in or a map. Two give a shout out to confluence and ties to central Issaquah and other areas like the trail trailheads and so forth. We know that that has to be in here. If you all want to discuss any potential policies for that tonight, let us know if you have any ideas, but we can work on that too and bring it back next time. Address individual gateways was one that came up last time. It was in the original draft that we brought here, but they were taken out. And so we have some policies that are written. We can put those back in. The streets gate um, has some nice gateway pictures. Look at page okay. 49. Okay. I'm just saying if you want to, if you want to reuse that diagram. Yeah. Got a west gateway, north gateway. 
if we're if we're gonna if we're if if the streetscape guide design or whatever the heck this thing's called downtown streetscape concept plan is still valid, mm -hmm. then we should just take those gateways, and then just incorporate this in the plan. Okay. Uh, this one, this one came up. Discuss which when somebody from the public brought it up. Discuss which views to protect. We have two existing policies in there. One is require building setbacks to preserve views of the hillsides from existing street corridors, and the other improve public access to and views of Issaquah Creek and the East Fork of Issaquah Creek within Old Town. So those are both existing. Is there something else that you all would like to change or add or clarify or make stronger? Yes. Okay. So I think 3-2 is fine, but it's not, that's not about preserving a view. That's about preserving just views in general, okay. ensuring that you have a general visibility. I think the idea is that there are specific views that we want protected, and we want that articulated, similar to access and views of Isca Creek and, Creek and the East Fork. I think the one that, keep, that keeps in mind is um, the view of Rainier. Okay. And so I think having that in the plan to make sure that a structure, say, along Front Street does not block the view of Rainier from Rainier Street. Okay. Or Rainier. Rainier, Rainier in front. Street. I think yeah. you see it from both. Um, so I think that's the one I, so the, the comment, I brought this up a couple of meetings and uh, as it keeps coming up, is Sorry. specifying which views we want mm -hmm. to protect. Um, so I like, I like that 3-3 three is in there. I didn't realize that. I think that's the kind of language we're looking for. I think the view of Mount Rainier is one I'd like to add. Okay. Um, what other specific views? Not the general we want to be able to see green, which I think is fine, but that's not, you can't point to 3.2 and say, we can't, you can't do this development. You use 3.2 to say, okay, I want my zoning to have a certain setback. Mm -hmm. you, don't use it, you, you don't use it to defend a specific view. I think I'm looking for more specific views. Okay. Any other views? I would say as you're going south down um, Front Street, is that south? Going toward Squawk Mountain, mm -hmm. being able to mm -hmm. see Squawk Mountain on the street okay. while you're driving through Front Street. Okay. And that's just looking at particularly south of Sunset, whether or not there would be building heights at that point that would affect the ability to see. Okay. Got them. Anything else? I just hope that if you don't uh, initiate, uh, illuminate all of the possible views individually, some of them are going to get lost because of they're not in there. Well, then they're not important views. Was well, there something else you want to add? No. Okay. And we. But by doing that, I'm mm -hmm. afraid that you take away the, the rest of it. I mean, I think if, if you think about it, there's really... And say, for example, the, the view of Squawk Mountain from right. South Front Street and the view of Mount Rainier from Rainier Boulevard. We can call those out, because the only ones the city can really protect are the views from public areas. Mm -hmm. We can't protect them from someone's house or from, okay. you know, it mm -hmm. has to be like from a public park or a public street. We can try to protect those, because we, we are in control of what happens on the site, but... So, so there's really only four... Um, view corridors, because there's only four streets of significance, Rainier, Front, Sunset, and then Old Route 10. I think as you mentally tick through it, we've covered Rainier and Front. On Sunset and Old Route 10, as you stand in those streets, is there a specific view that's worth protecting? Well, you might want to protect well, Tiger Mountain from yeah. Memorial Field. And Squawk I mean, as well, if you're on Sunset. It's, it's from any public. No, that, no that, that's why I'm asking that question. I'm, mm -hmm, I'm right. prompting you guys to think specifically about those four main streets. Mm -hmm. but I like your point about the field. And about Newport yet? Newport's not covered in this, no. right? Downtown. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I, I, I can't think of any more, but I thought we'd spend another minute on no, it. No, I think Sunset curves enough that I wouldn't say that you necessarily need Specific that view. type of view. Yeah. Those are good questions. Okay. Yeah, I think if you add Rainier and Squawk to Section 3, that'd be a good addition. Okay. And we're going to, and not Tiger? So I think the problem with talking about Tiger in relationship to the downtown area is whether or not there is a specific view corridor from a specific street. 
Right. I was just throwing that out there that it's not just street corridors where you can see yeah. all sides. It can be um, from parks as do well. Do you see Poo Poo Point from anywhere in Old Town, or do you got to get a little bit further south? Yeah. You can see it. Yeah. You can see it from all front street. That Our, might be right? one. Um, from the from front street, the entire view of front street, you can see um, Poo Poo Point. Uh, most of uh, Squawk, uh, most of Tiger, and definitely Rainier. Nice. Okay. This does presuppose it's a nice day. <laughs> Billy, you can see Poopoo Point from most of the front. I'll check it out. Say <laughs> Yes, I'll, I'll go you. for a walk walking, tour. Right. walking tour. Yeah. Um, the other thing to look at is from any particular parks, whether or not there are views. And so looking within that area, you've got Confluence Park, um, which could have a view particularly across the, um, the bridge. I don't know if there's a view in that direction. Don't think there's particularly a view from Memorial Park. Do we have a walking tour scheduled? We have Thank a driving you. tour a scheduled. Driving tour mm -hmm. on the 24th. 24th. Mm -hmm. We maybe just add that to the agenda to not only talk about neighbors and streetscapes, but we'll add it to our stops us. and yeah. get out and see if you can see things. Exactly. Yeah. Since it'll be daylight. It will be. During yes. the tour. Okay. That's a great idea. Hopefully, so it's not raining. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. But another option, Lindsay, along with what you were saying, is that you, well. I don't know. Yeah, I think it would just be a good idea during that period of time right. to stop at those parks and see if there are any particular views that we would want to protect. Right. Okay. Yep. All right. And then moving on, it was requested that we call out treasures in the plan. We currently say form formally recognize the abundant Issaquah treasures located in, Issaqu in Old Town. That's a policy in there. All of the treasures are listed in the comprehensive plan. They are potentially getting revamped soon, but as I mentioned last time, most of those are located, at least two thirds of those are located in Old Town. But I don't know if that's, if what is here currently is enough to call out the treasures or if you all are looking for more. No, I, w I would look for them listed or at least a section that discusses the abundance of them. Okay. So you want it more than just mentioning them, you want them called out? Not as an action item, just as a. Is an appendix is okay, are. or do you want it in the plan? I think an appendix would make sense. Because that's where we had them in the original draft. But, in the, Lindsay, I'm not sure if I agree, because I don't, because one of the things we want to avoid doing is having a list of things show up in multiple documents. Right, it's already in the appendix mm -hmm. of the comp plan. Uh, yeah, I, I, it, I think I disagree with you. Because if, if something it, changes, you got to make sure it changes in both places. You yeah, and that's to, true. So that you're consistent. I mean, do we, do we want to say, as per the whatever comp plans, people know to look there? Sure. I think and that would be perfectly right. fine. Okay. What, didn't we add that to the... Well, I would mm -hmm. include a link as well, since we are in the digital age. AJ, if it wasn't for the clouds, yes, you could see it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else that are in the policies or... Can you spell? Can you spell what uh, ADU is? I noticed oh, it got dropped did twice. Did I not spell that out? Yes. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. Not in uh, five two and five three. Okay. Yes. Okay. Do we need to? All right. Phrase this question. Is there anything? So now that we're adding old route ten, is there anything that needs to change? I think everything's phrased vaguely enough that and everything everything that would apply to front I, and sunset would apply to I think you could add something in the goal A placemaking that discusses that as a special place. I might recommend too that we're doing the tour next time and then we open the public hearing <laughs> and we could have discussion then too, after you've seen it, it might help to go out there and instead of seeing it in the context of Central Issaquah, seeing it in the context of Old Town mm -hmm. and working on a policy after that. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Okay.
speaking of boundaries, so I don't, I don't think our intention was to discuss this tonight, really, but to throw it up here, it's in your packet, see if you have any thoughts on it. Part of the tour is for you all to think about the boundaries and what fits within your idea of Old Town and what doesn't. And so we can talk about these tonight if you'd like to. And that was the reason for an aerial view and the yeah. zoning and the, the labels. Oh, this, so was, oh, this kinda, was in response to that. You could kind of get right. an idea of why things might be in the locations they were in. And we have big ones here, too, if you wanted to unroll those for any reason. And I think one of the questions that we had kind of brought up was the northeastern portion of front north of Gilman, whether or not that makes as much sense in this portion. So you're talking about Old Route 10? North of Gilman? Yes. No, I, mm, I thought, well, no, you mean the, the northwest. You all, you all had decided to keep Old yes, Route 10 but in there. It, it, I think the only thing was the, oh, I guess we did. We did, you're right. Mm -hmm. I, I had questions about the ones that were facing Front Street right by the interchange there, whether yeah. or not they fit the character, but I think we want to make sure that if they make changes that they go toward the character, so. Okay. I think the only the only one that I think is still is um, the ones on Front Street um, south of Clark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything to say about that now, okay, but that's yeah. definitely it's one just I, something I, we want to think want about them. for the tour too. Yeah, just put them in there early. Because I think yeah, it really depends on where where you want your entrance to Old Town. Mm -hmm. Do you want it down um, where Second and Front meet? Which is where it is now, mm -hmm. or is it really at uh, Clark slash Newport? Is that the entrance? Okay. Because those could mean two very different things. Mm -hmm. Well, when we drive, mm -hmm. we can make those decisions and yep. look at it in real time. Yep. Okay. The tour is the 20. Oh. No. Thank you. Look at that. May 24th. Look at that. Yeah. It's also in your packet on one of the last pages. We try to put those in. Is the tour open to the public? I think so. It depends on how be. many people are in the van. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> we'll be doing an agenda Hundreds. that shows where we where we Hundreds. are going to stop, like we did for Central. That at you know whatever time we'll hope to stop here, wherever. So people are protesting. They can they can follow us around. I yeah, think sure. it's a little complicated about setting up time. The discussion might go. Right, but for public, public um, yeah. since it's a public meeting, when you guys are all together, we have to have a public agenda and places where they can find us, generally. Like, that's generally. what we did for Central. Yeah. yeah, we had to do that for Central. That's fine. So that's all I have. So we will make changes that we talked about tonight, put things in here that we didn't get a chance to put in here last time, and bring it back for the public hearing at the next meeting. I had one question um, about the boundary. Last time we talked about the um, southern mm -hmm. corner or southern pocket that's mm -hmm. kind of cut out of it. And why was it, why did we decide to have that little notch in there? The reason why I'm, I'm bringing it up is because the outer boundary actually mm -hmm. follows the Rainier Trail mm -hmm. and then it stops as it goes through, well, it doesn't stop, but the Rainier Trail goes right through that little boundary area. Yep. And I'm just thinking it, or, doesn't does it make sense to have that like that? Trish, way back when we were way in the way back machine. We were trying <laughs> to get sewers. the whole school and the <laughs> before the dinosaurs were gone. Um, we were trying to get all of the school and the bus barn in the old town because they were part of the community facilities that we had. Um, it mm. can change. You could stop it at Clark if you wanted and have all of the southern part um, be not in old town. I mean, it's totally up to you all what you think should belong. But back in the day. We wanted all of the community facilities that were in that area to be in Old Town. All right. I we think there was also a discussion whether or not those had sewer access. Mm -hmm. Somebody said. Yes, so you're right. There was. On our tour, we definitely want to mm -hmm. go down and look at that. Okay. Right. And I, we should make a note because I can't remember would, if they ever got. Why has been important. See sewer if they got sewer. That was what they said at the last sewer. meeting. Right. I remember because that used that used to be an issue mm -hmm. on whatever the street south of that was always Lewis Lane. The always city had versus issues. county, and if it's county, it can be sewer. But if it's city, it has to be mandated that it's on. Oh, it's all city. Yeah, yeah it's all yeah. city. This is this is just neighborhoods. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Never but mind. But there's still we have little pockets that don't have sewer yet in the city. Trisha, had, oh, had that area been annexed at the time? Oh yeah. 
Yes. Had it? Okay. Park Point hadn't well, been. Well, yeah, Park Point hadn't, so I thought maybe. Park hadn't been, but okay. the part that's in there had been. Rules. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So we'll look at yep. that. So we'll that's go all down and look at that all. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. We should make a note because that would be um, Bob might know. About it would be. Sewer. It would be Bob. That's exciting. Okay. Um, uh, Trish, actually, to that other comment, the other question about that um, those three properties, would it make sense for the city, for the uh, district to actually purchase that land? With what money? <laughs> what district? The uh, school district. Purchase the, the land that's right next. A lot of money. Purchase the land right next to the uh, baseball field and the football field. Seems like that would be a oh, prime location for Sorry. us. Sorry, uh, which direction are you going? Um, Where the bus barn is? No, if you go down towards that little notch um, at the southern boundary mark. Any oh, uh, you would have to ask them. They would have to buy up all the little pieces or um, do eminent domain on all the little pieces. You can go to a school board meeting, Ron. Yeah. On that. Yeah. Take your checkbook. I'll, I'll sign uh, AJ to do that. <laughs> it's a very cheery. It is, isn't it? Do you like that? Doesn't that just get invigorating? It's too much, too much happiness for me. I'm not sure about the palm trees. I was just no, going to say that. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's four seasons, that. There's actually a, a slide very, uh, of that I had to get rid of it because I, I thought, no, like they're not going to go. Trees. Yes, but when you think of Issaquah, do you think of palm trees? No. In my backyard, you will see palm trees. Oh, yeah. oh there. Well, if we're now, planting you guys a tree. Have a choice. If you feel cozy or down at the tables to do the visioning, I know you do visioning in your sleep now, but if you wanted to, you could do visioning down here, or if you wanted to stay up here, you can also do visioning up here. It depends. We're supposed to put you in a very comfortable, facilitating. So you, so you got us. You got us cookies. No. Oh. I told David that this is actually David's part that I'm facilitating for him because he. I think can't I'm fine here. Aren't, like, aren't we always visioning? Yes, we really are. That's oh. why I wanted to be sure you guys got a shot at the strategic plan. So, do you want to just be cozy where you are, or do you want to be cozy down in the other seats that it's make fine. noises it's when you kick your feet? You're okay up here? Yep. Could you go over just a little bit about how the community has the opportunity to do this? I have tons of information up here. Yes. Okay. Yes, I will. Okay. And we're going to have a flip chart, too. So there's just going to be all sorts of excitement going on. I think I sent you all the email that opened, that started out the, um, the strategic plan. Yes, my question to my fellow council commissioners is whether or not you've all filled out the, f the survey. The survey? I have not. Well, there's still time. Ooh. There's still time. And what I'm supposed to read to you all now is this structured exercise is an opportunity for you to give input into the vision and priorities you believe the city should focus its resources on achieving. We will begin by describing the strategic planning process, and afterwards we will move into questions, which will give you an opportunity to provide your input on Issaquah's vision for the future and its priorities. I didn't write this, but we were told that this is the direction we're supposed to give you. Ground rules. I thought this was important with this bunch. <laughs> Treat everyone <laughs> respectfully. Do not interject or speak over people, Ron and AJ, and the rest. Don't we'll speak over AJ. <laughs> no, nobody does over AJ. Listen <laughs> while others are speaking. No side conversations. Everyone's comments are valued. It is important to hear from everyone. Except and AJ's. Ron, we're going to give demerits. <laughs> we're going to start giving demerits. Please be mindful of the time we have. Do not speak for extensive periods of time. Can we all do that? Yes, we can. So what, what, and why? Which sounds a little bit like a wrinkle in time, but it's not exactly. The reason we're doing this is to have a shared vision for multiple years that will engage as many people who live, work, and play here as possible to unite around a common set of goals and priorities. Your participation will help with this. Of course, you guys are old hat at visioning and goals and priorities, so it was important to me to make sure that we made the time to do this. What is a strategic plan? 
It's a document that's used to help us with our priorities, goals, and actions. I'm hoping that it's also a funding mechanism so that when we have something that we really want to do, that the strategic plan helps us to make sure that the funding is available for the, the hardworking plans that we've all put together, as you all talked about with the streetscape plan. Um, I think that's a big, a big part of what the strategic plan could be. And why are we a part of this is, I think, pretty obvious, because um, you guys live here, you work here, you are a part of it, you've already volunteered a lot of your time for it, you know how important these sorts of things are to um, have outreach. And there's also something on the website that you can encourage all of your neighbors and coworkers and um, folks that you know to go on the website and also do the surveys. They also, there's a place, this is called, you are participating in a meeting in a box. And there's information that um, your homeowners association or your neighbors or your book club or your Zumba class, you can get people together and do this meeting in the box, a very similar thing, um, and turn in all your results to the city and that would be super great. Mm. So this is the graphic of where we're going. The first part is who we are and that's what we're working on now. And then uh, this ends, I think, in the middle of May. We have to have all our results in. And then we uh, work on where we want to go. And then we check back in with the community to make sure that they, cap they captured what you all were talking about. And then at the end is how we get there. So those are the three phases. And I believe we're supposed to be done with this by the end of the year, although I don't see anything called out date-wise. But that's always been my thought that we're supposed to be done by the end of the year. So with that, are you ready for the first question? I need a scribe, please. They decided not to be cozy in the table. We're cozy where we are. Trish, before you start with these questions. Yes, there's only five. How many people are you looking at to, to do this? We have 15,000 people in Issa. We're going to get 15,000 different answers. Seventy-five percent will say traffic is terrible. I want you to fix it. And then we figure out how to do it. We've been trying to do that for. But, but this is a new way. I've been on seventeen years, and we've been trying to do it for seventeen years. I know. We're trying something new. I, and you're going to be able to put that in one of the questions, one of the answers. Is so the this was initiated by City Council. Um, not yeah, the city council, staff. but when they get the results, the city council is going to sit down and look at it and say, well, it's not what we want. Well, they might do a I, meeting I, in the it, box, it, too. It, it, <laughs> I don't know. So are you suggesting that we, uh, we qualify these questions by saying we understand that traffic is a number one concern, move on to a different type of, you know, Tell us something no. other than traffic, what no. we already know. I am, as the facilitator, I need you to stick to the protocol and answer the questions. Even though you guys are rock stars and this is old hat for you, I still need you to follow the protocol. We can't think of five different questions to ask. You can certainly take the survey and write in, or you can give us more information after we've done the five questions, but we can't completely change around the meeting in the box. We can't think outside the box. You it's, can at the end. You, you have to do the five first, though. You have to eat your vegetables first, and then you can go for dessert if you want, OK? So the first one, okay. I want you all to take a little moment and tell us what do you personally value about Issaquah? You want to start with Carl? Or you want to start with Joan? Uniqueness. The next question, then I'm going to go the opposite way. Yeah, I, I, I value that it's it's unique. It's different than any other city around here. And it offers a lot of opportunities for uh, hiking, biking, environmental abilities to enjoy the environment. Excellent first answer. Ron. Do, do, well, do, do. <laughs> These are say. hard questions. It's hard, to, and it's hard to put the answer in words. Um, access to an over, access to an abundant, access to abundant outdoor recreational opportunities. Excellent. Lindsay. Family friendly 
safe community. Excellent. Troy. I'll not let her catch up. <laughs> community. I, I didn't put that as just, you know, describing Issaquah. Oh, okay. I believe the hey, idea, community. yes. Okay, got it. Yeah, I agree with the community part. I would say it's um, uh, like um, small town feel, but access to city. Oh, good well one. Said. You guys are good at this. I think I would also add in that what I put on there is also is in addition to and yeah. should yeah. re-emphasize other things like access okay. and outdoor recreation, things like that. Right. I, I think same, I, I'm glad I went forth because I'll echo access to outdoor recreation, the family friendly community, the small, the, I was gonna say, it's almost like smallness, but like in a, in a good sense, but the, the city I feel like operates a lot smaller than it actually is. Um, and the only thing I'd add is uh, affordability relative to some of our okay. neighbors. Nice. Carl. Nothing to add? I, I digress. I can say all these nice things. This reminds me a lot of uh, total quality management. I remember that which was a failed experiment in my opinion. But I, I don't know what else to add to this. It's a, we moved here because we could afford a house here when we moved. Okay. And it was a good co little community, had all the access to the Seattle, but a small town atmosphere. I'm not sure it, that exists anymore because it's now gotten too big with traffic and everything else. Okay, that comes, that you get to start with the next question. I think that's the next question. So Is I'm there gonna, anything on, on this list that anyone disagrees with? It sounds like everyone likes all of them, yep. from what I heard. I would also add on there, one of the things that I like about Issaquah versus other areas like Sammamish or North Bend is that we're not just a bedroom community, that we have retail and nice. commercial. Um, which means that I can get a lot more done in town. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, not not a not just a bedroom community. Yeah, yeah not just a bedroom community. Well, okay. she gets to add. I want to add. Go for it. Tree canopy, the views of tree canopy and views of the Alps or okay. mountains. Yeah. Okay. Views of our mountains or Alps. Alps. The mm -hmm. Alps and Lake Sammamish. Yeah, there Lake you Sammamish. go. I was going to say generally the parks. I think we have an excellent set of parks, and maybe I'm biased because I'm up in the Highlands and can't walk without tripping over a park, but mm -hmm. something did, I value. Did you want to add anything as the public to our list? Um, I, I guess what I would... Yeah, Kristen. Sorry. You can now. Um, can you walk it over to him? Um, wait, 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 wait. I have, I have a mic for you. Oh. Is it on? Uh, I think it out. Wes is gonna turn it on. If you speak into it, does it make a? Hi. Um, cool, thank you, Wes. Thank you. Ken Eastman, I'm a resident uh, of Issaquah and Talis, and I, I would echo all of that. Um, it seems to me like Issaquah has a unique small town charm um, that's uh, probably missing from a lot of the communities in the Puget Sound. And the special things that we have here are worth going out of our way to protect the Isquah Alps, Old Town, um, all of the Salmon Days and the Fenders on Front Street and the activities. There is something very special about Issaquah, and I, I say that after raising my family and living in Bellevue for 25 years. Um, don't make this Bellevue. Okay. Which is a wonderful city, by the way. Right. This is special. I think that uh, other cities have functions like Salmon Days and stuff, but our functions seem to be more 
family oriented, closer knit, people know each other. It's smaller. It's not broadcasting to the world. It's Issaquah. It's less commercial. Excellent. Yeah. Are you ready for the next Down question? Home. Yep. Ready for the next one? Back to winter. What aspirations do you have for Issaquah in the next 15 to 20 years? Carl, you get to start it. And think of all the things we've had, and just uh, just to cue you up, the, in the last 10, when the first Old Town was written, the Old Town plan, we've got now the library, we've got improvements to the fish hatchery, we've got Confluence Park, we've got um, the community center, we're, we moved the skateboard park to a better location, we've got the police station and the um, city hall. We've done tons of things just in 10 years. And so this is 10 to 15. What are things that you, you want us to have done? Could be the streetscape we just talked about. It could be sky's the limit. Somehow controlling traffic. Nice. Right now, that's the biggest issue, and it will be. And it may be cross-through traffic. It may be, I don't, I don't know. Rolling traffic. Good I don't one. Know if that's an aspiration, but no, it's a good aspiration. AJ, what do you have? I'm trying to figure out a phrase this in a bullet. Um, that that central Isagoa is has is successful smart growth. So that it's not only a, that central Isagoa has grown the way we want it to, but also that it's it's a vibrant and has grown in a smart manner. Great. Troy. Uh, I don't know. I think um, I, I have a hard time not saying something about traffic, even though I I don't want to. But I think I think underlining traffic is is the most important thing. The, I mean, it, it's already the the thing that has the potential to impact and make people not want to come to Issaquah. Um, on a, on a daily on a week you know day day by day basis and I think that if we don't and and I and, I, and when I say that I mean I think if we, if we don't engage with the region because it's a regional traffic issue and figure that out collectively then then Issaquah will I, I think be doomed in some ways so I'll say that but then maybe I'll say this um, I, I'm really excited about the. Um, in all of the sort of visioning and planning that we've done, the idea of having a lot more sort of outdoor gathering spaces and kind of connected walkways and just outdoor sitting and, and um, not just standard parks, but sort of um, what's like the ideas around Mall Street and just having people mm -hmm. be outside more mm -hmm. in the rain, but nonetheless outside more. So more, out, more outdoor gathering spaces for people. Great, good answer. Lindsay. Um, I've got two. One, figuring out our public transportation, both inside the city and more connectivity to other areas. Um, we've seen that Seattle has gotten great use of their public transport. I'd like to see us move forward in that, and particularly around um, our sound transit planning. And then the other aspiration I have is that we get caught up on our school planning and building because that to me is one of those areas where if we continue to have the congestion in schools, that's going to affect people wanting to move here and house prices and things like that. Great, really good. Ron. Uh, let's see. I'm going to say no through traffic. What does um, that mean? No. Help me understand that one. So no through traffic would be uh, traffic going from the freeway, coming to and from the freeway to Maple Valley, Black Diamond, Auburn, Kent. Okay. Um, or should, no through traffic that would normally take 18. Should take 18. Okay. Um, not really so much in the city, but west access to Tiger Mountain for mountain bikes. Um, 
ST3. Okay. And uh, to achieve the a world-class leader status in pedestrian bike mobility and public transit. Nice. Big, I like that one. Joan, wait. we'll wait for Kristen. You'll be pondering. Um, kind of following on what, what you said, um, aspirational, um, I would like to see a new road to prevent or to take off the, the, the uh, through traffic. It's aspirational. I want a new road that, that not, can handle it. You're not raising the old the B -word? IPAS question, are you? <laughs> yeah, she is. If it's over the city, I just, you know, this is aspirational. I don't know where it goes, but that's what I would like. Okay. And the second one would be um, that Issaquah would be a world renowned destination hmm. for recreational activities. Nice. I second that. What about the green necklace? No one mentioned completing the green necklace. Is that something we want to have done in 15, 20 years? Oh, I'd, 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 I'd considered saying that. So I think not only, but I think if we're talking aspirationally, I think that we are known for our green necklace. Mm -hmm. The aspiration is 15 to 20 years from now. I'm assuming that the green necklace is going to be done soon. It, it, definitely in 15, the early part. How about? Excellent. And, and is there anything else? Oh, oh, keep going. I'm sorry. More connectivity between north and south of the 90. So whether that is accomplished with a lid on the freeway or an underpass or more walking paths, yes, flip. I we have more aspirations. More permeable. Yes, I like that. I-90 is more Adrian? permeable north-south. Okay. Oh. I want to add to that. Okay. Minimize the noise from I-90. Okay. What, something Joan said sparked an idea in my head, and I think I was thinking about that this question originally in a different way, but from an image standpoint, I think if Issaquah was known as the gateway to the Cascades, mm -hmm. nice. I mean, I think a lot of us think of it that way. That's why I, that's why I moved here. Um, well, it could have been any mountain range, but the fact that it's Cascades is fine. Right. But if it, if it were, if we were known for that. Uh, nice. And Ken, do you have anything to add? Uh, I think we need to protect what makes Issaquah special while managing the necessary growth so that we get what we want out of the, out of the growth. Uh, and I would also echo, we need more connectivity between the north and south parts of Issaquah, there's a huge barrier there called Interstate 90 right now. Super. And is there anything up there that anyone disagrees with? It sounded also like you all are in agreement with what everybody said. This is great. You're such a good group for this. Ready for the next question then? <laughs> Kristen's can't ready. See, can't see the previous page. No. Okay. Why are these things important to you? We're back to Joan starting out. Because I want it all. I want easy access. I want uh, pretty trees and parks. I want uh, the ability to hike and bike. So it's all of those things. Um, Excellent. That works. Ron. The outdoor gateway and better connectivity to the trails um, will improve our, will connect people to nature and improve um, quality of life and, act, and, and see, will improve our leisure lifestyle and encourage a better quality of life. 
Nice. Well done. How are you doing? I can't spell anymore. Man. That's okay. We can translate later. <laughs> Lindsay, are you ready? Are you ready I for I was going to give Kristen a moment. Okay. Because you, you can tell where she is. I can just see her hand going, so I don't well, know yeah, how close she is. No, you're doing fabulous. QOL is quality of life. Okay. It's abbreviated. Help I'll remember that. <laughs> yep. We watched the video. Right. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, so this is important to me because I'm here for the long haul, um, and I want people who are raising families here to be able to see themselves as empty nesters here and enjoying the community at the different stages of their life. Nice. Um, nice. I like as that. different things are important to them. You have a very determined look on your face. What? You have a very determined look on your face. Okay, Troy, are you ready? I'm ready. I, yeah, I think. Um, I, mean, I, I think quality of life really sums it up well. But what I mean by that is, um, you, you, we. It's important to me because I, I like to be able to engage with Issaquah in lots of different ways and like not have to just go somewhere else for stuff. You know, like I, it's a it's a really it's not big it's not a big city, but it has everything that anyone should need. It's self contained, yeah, it can be self contained. So nice. I think that that's important. To maintain the the fullness of the city, that it does all things. Work work load play. Excellent. So I think for mine, uh, this is important to me because I want to be welcoming to our neighbors who have not yet moved here. Ooh. Point back to my number one. I want to. I want to make sure this is a city that you don't have to write this all down, Kristen. But I will. okay. <laughs> um, but I, I make sure it's a city that is able to absorb more people um, in a way that is healthy and vibrant for the people that are here and the people that are coming. So. Excellent. Carl. Quality of life, I guess. I repeat it again. Okay. I'm not sure how we interconnect quality of life with more people coming into town, which is limited in the capacity. We already have a whole variety of people in the town upset about gateway mass development, I-90. That certainly isn't very welcoming. It is to the people that may live there. Mm -hmm. but then when they get on Newport Way and try to drive into town, they're going to be not very happy. Mm -hmm. Oh, it, the whole idea that well, why is it important, all those things are important is to Quality of life to people living in Israel. Mm -hmm. okay. So emphasizing quality of life as it relates to traffic and con congestion, I want people to be able to get home quicker, and I want fewer people to be idling in town, contributing to bad air quality. And so I think those are two things why the traffic mitigation is important to me. Mm -hmm. Good point. And Ken, did you have something to add? Yes, I, uh, I see it as a quality of life uh, issue. And um, I think the goal of this is to maintain and improve the quality of life of uh, living in Issaquah, and conversely, I have every expectation that if we don't try and do that, we're all going to be disappointed as growth goes unmanaged, and, um, and we'll probably ruin a good thing that we have here, so it's worth fighting for. Anything up there that anyone disagrees with? 
Okay, so you ready for the next question? Carl, it's good we're starting with you on this one. What are the challenges we face in reaching these aspirations? You got some challenges for us? What are the challenges? Too many people moving into the area, not enough money to get the things done that we want to do when we want to do them. As we've said many times, you can't build enough roads to solve traffic, so you got to figure out other ways to do it. That, that, That's good. There's three of them right there. There's a good trifecta right there. Males can reiterate them, saying them a different way. Could you please repeat the third one? You can't build enough roads, build to, enough roads. Do the okay. to fix the congestion. Thank you. So I'll, so they have to figure out I'll, I'll reiterate, but re rephrase all three of those. <laughs> I think for the first one, it's not that there's too many people, it's that we have congestion. Congestion in our roads, we have congestion in our buses, we have congestion in our schools. And so they're all solvable problems. They just require significant investment in infrastructure to solve them. And so the, the, the second one is making sure we have the financial resources and I think also the speed, which I think are two separate problems, to put in the public infrastructure to absorb the growth that we have. So, yeah, so I think for Christian, yeah, so it's, it's be able to have the, the, the time, the time and money to build out public infrastructure to absorb the growth. And that's roads, transit, parks, schools, parking, a lot of different things there. Um, and then I think the last one, I, I, I think Carl put it a good way, it's just the, the geometric limits of the city, mm -hmm. and the, way that, the way that we're tightly bound, the Alps, and then, and then particularly the Issaquahoba Road bottleneck is very much a unique, is, it, is a very unique challenge that faces us. Go ahead. I think I would call out Isqua Hobart as a standalone oh, challenge. Oh, okay. But I think that the fact that that's outside the city and the traffic, a lot of the traffic on that road is a regional issue, mm -hmm. but it's a road that would be incredibly difficult to widen. I think it's a very unique challenge that faces us. Uh, I I'll, I'll just say, um, maybe add a layer to the, I think it's funding really, but what I really think it is is f uh, the, the main challenge is how, just how long it takes to do anything, right? So, um, and mostly that's because of funding cycles and how long it takes to raise money to do certain things, but you know, the whole ST3 thing is a great example where, you know, we're gonna be building 1970s technology in 2025 or whatever it is, 2040, 2041. And then, um, I mean, tonight we were talking about just doing streetscape improvements and pushing them out past six years. So it just takes so long to do everything, and then we just never, you know, we, got, we, we fell behind 20 years ago, and we just said we're never going to catch up. So I think that's, we just don't have enough time. And we don't have a time machine. <laughs> Not yet. Yeah, I think, I think to the extent of that, it's not only that, we have so much to do is that we're already behind on some of the, some of the issues. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the already behind can apply to schools, it can Everything. apply to yeah. traffic, it Parks. can, okay. yeah. Um, so I'm gonna take a slightly different approach to this and be a little bit more specific. I believe one of our funding problems is that the current Council and administration is too strict and controlling with the budget that they already have. I believe that we have some funding that can be used toward things, and they are hesitant to make a move either with their funding or with their decision making. Um, I think the current council likes to plan and likes to 
discuss without necessarily moving forward on important decisions. And at a certain point, we are going to face big issues from being hesitant. Um, and so that, to me, is one very strong challenge that we face. Um, the other challenge I would put out there is that even though we're trying to create a plan, we either don't have a lot of public engagement or we have lost some of the public trust um, to believe that we're going to be able to act. Um, and so I think right now you're, they're asking for public engagement and I'm, I'm not sure the public necessarily wants to engage. Ron. Uh, first step, city council needs to approve the funding of the DMO. The what? It's yeah, the DMO. Yeah. The DMO. Yeah, it's the tourism. The destination oh, marketing okay. organization. Oh. Um, washed out funding of 18. And yeah. under challenges, I also like to, I would like to put a threat. Um, and that is a temptation to leverage easy money. That that's a threat? That would be a threat because we can over leverage. Okay, I just wanted to understand what you were saying. And I, with uh, interest rates, I think that could be a possibility. People say, oh great, let's go ahead and do these great things and we're going to leverage debt instead of raising taxes or something of that sort. And then we have an economic downturn and pay the debt and we crash our credit score. And then we end up paying higher interest rates and everything else starts falling apart. Okay. Joan. No, I agree with all that. Um, I have a hard time with reinventing things that have already been decided on before they're actually done, which is, I mean, it's been called out before, but that I think that's my my biggest uh, problem is um, it's not following up, just spending too much time thinking about thinking about the little things. If it's a that instead of a if, or it, it's the concept that has to be accomplished, not just how it's written. Ken, do you have anything? Yes. Yes, uh, the three things that I see as challenges. Unmanaged growth, development doesn't pay its own way for the yeah. infrastructure, and uh, our little ability to address the regional cut through traffic problem that will only get worse over time as South King County gets developed. I would say the last bullet point there is really that it's a regional issue. Yeah. It's an issue that we can't solve directly internally. Yeah. We need to work with the other cities. Anything up there that you don't agree with? I'd like to add one more thing. Okay. Um, I think we're scared to go bold and think outside the box. To her point, we needle things, to, and to Joan's point, we needle things to death, and we don't take the leap of faith and go bold. If we don't go bold, then we'll be just like everyone else. I think we get set in our ways of, of how things are done, and we, we don't think out of the box. We think that it always has to be done a certain way, and we need to stop doing that because we'll always get what we have now, not what we actually want. Okay. 
And Lindsay, did you have another one? Uh, I disagree with Ron's idea that we have a temp that a challenge is the the temptation to leverage easy money, um, which could hurt our bond rating. We have a triple A bond rating. We have been very conservative as a city in making sure that we have we we keep our money without spending it. I don't think that's a I don't think it challenges that we are necessarily going to over leverage ourselves. I think the challenge is that we don't leverage what we have enough. You can we can you can under leverage also. Yeah. Okay. I think that's I think that'd be something that we would disagree yeah. on. Well, I'm referring to over leverage. I know, and I think Lindsay and I are saying we think the city's under leveraged given where it is in its growth cycle. Wouldn't disagree. Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay. I wouldn't want to see us over, like, get over leverage, but I don't think that is a challenge that we face in reaching those aspirations. Okay. So are we ready for the last one? What changes are needed? So this is phrasing it in a different way. What changes are needed to reach these aspirations? So we can look at each one of the changes, the challenges, and think about how we can change it to make it better, to make it in our favor. Um, we need to change the process. And by the process, you mean like decision making or decision funding? Decision making, uh, what it takes to uh, environmental stud, not taking away the environmental studies, but making it faster um, so the projects don't cost as much mm -hmm. and can be done faster. Okay. We're on your own. Um, okay, so two. Uh, we need infrastructure to support non-vehicle mobility options and improve uh, personal safety. Uh, I can repeat that. We need infrastructure to support non-vehicle mobility options and improve personal safety. Okay. And tighter enforcement of our tree canopy regulations. Okay, Ron. Personal safety. Personal safety where? Personal safety for uh, pedestrians and bicyclists. Okay, so the same, related to the same comment, okay. Is that the leading fear of why people don't want to bike in town? It's because right. they feel like they're gonna get hit by a car. Right. Lindsay? Uh, he had a second one. Oh, you have another one? Oh, yeah, uh, tighter enforcement of our tree canopy standards. Okay. Um, so I think the idea we proposed in the last one of not being willing to make bold moves, I think we need to consider bold moves. Um, so what changes? We need to be able to make decisions and make bold decisions. Um, similarly, we need to substantially increase communication and the way that the public interacts with the city, either staff or council or committees, um, so that it isn't all about the public coming to the council. We need the council and the decision makers go to the public. Um, along those lines, we need communication between the city and the school district and the city and business owners. All good. No, you're doing great. 
<laughs> is your hand getting tired yet? <laughs> I just, I'm losing letters. <laughs> yeah. Well, they said something about you can either photograph that or retype it out into their form. I'm, All right, I'm just sending them, I think. Yeah. So fiddle with it. Okay, Troy. So I have a tactical one that we have no control over, but I think it would be a, a huge benefit, and that is just to completely rethink the way that we fund transportation. And, and really what I mean by that is, you know, I live just south of town and I don't pay, I'm not paying for SD3. Like I don't, I don't, I come and use the park and ride. <laughs> park, I park for free every day and I ride the bus in and I, my car tabs, like I don't, I, I didn't vote on it because I'm outside of the regional transit um, area. So, which is, and that means so is everybody in Black Diamond and everybody else south, I mean, we all drive in and park for free at the parking ride, and I love it, but I think it's comical that I don't really pay for that service. So it just, and that's not anything that the city of Issaquah can do, but it's um, just, we need to, we're, I think we're running on a, an old funding model for our transportation, and people are living in just totally different places than they used to, and so completely expanding the reach of who pays for regional public transportation, I think, is important. Um, and roadways for that matter too, but I would really like to see that go to public transportation. And then on the, um, I mean, I think in terms of, I think we do a really good job, this kind of gets to what, what Lindsay was saying, but I think we do a really good job of like fostering a sense of community in Issaquah around like, you know, our festivals, the Salmon Days and, and all that has, a, and our, even the farmer's market, I think it has a much more community feel than if you go somewhere else to another festival as somebody else was saying. But if we could somehow, um, take that same spirit of community and build it into all this other stuff, all this other stuff that we do, all of our strategic planning and our visioning, and um, because I think that people, I mean, that's the, that's one of the reasons why people love living in Issaquah and coming to Issaquah. But somehow there's there is a disconnect between like that sense of community, which is really interesting, and then a, a gap in people's willingness to engage in where the city's gonna go, you know? Mm -hmm. if people, people can step back and complain about that building doesn't look the way I want it to look or whatever, but they're, it's harder to get them to engage. So finding creative ways to get them to engage and where is the city gonna be in 20 years would be, I think that's. With that, not expecting citizens to engage in the same ways that they haven't been, mm -hmm. but coming up with a different plan yeah. for that. I think I'll echo two points. One, I think um, city and public school coordination can be better. Um, I was pretty fr frustrated with a lot of the school conversations. It, it, their council, the two rele relevant councils aren't on the same page. Um, and then funding, I think identifying um, permanent permanent sources of funding is, is important. Or, or not permanent, dedicated sources of funding. Mm -hmm whether it be LIDs or the transportation levy that failed, uh, things like that I think are, are critical um, to, to build out the infrastructure we need. I think the last one um, is uh, city leadership on regional traffic issues. Um, I think the mayor, um, and I guess also city staff, but really the mayor really needs to um, drive the conversation at the county level and at the state level to help improve our regional traffic issues. It's not something the city can fix, but it's something that the mayor can get county council to fix. It's like it's something that WashDOT fix via engagement with the relevant legislators. I think it's something that the mayor and city staff need to figure out how to, how to play that game better. We were doing a side conversation. Sorry about that. No, that that's against the rules. <laughs> I know. It was actually we're feeling bad. against the rules. <laughs> we're feeling bad. We broke the ground rules. Anything else from AJ? No. I I disagree with Lindsay on the communication one, but I don't I don't have anything specific to say. But I I feel like the volume of communication from the city is adequate. But I don't, I don't feel, feel as... like the volume coming from the city to the citizens is adequate? Yeah. My problem is that the citizens aren't talking to the community. 
Or the citizens aren't talking to the city. Okay. Not necessarily. I do agree. I think the city does a good job communicating outward. To the inward. But they don't provide ample opportunities or, for citizens to engage with them um, because they expect it all to happen in this council chamber. And if you look at our audience right now, yeah. Yeah. Hundreds of people are sitting here, just uh -huh. so you know. That's We're right, not we are on TV. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. So Carl, what you got? Uh, it's very simple. We need to uh, increase time and find an unlimited budget. Okay. And that would solve all the problems. As we had unlimited budget, we'd have be able to pay more for staff to do the work. If we had more time, it would solve all the problems with planning and communication, stuff like that. I don't know how you do that. I think back, I've been waiting for maybe 15 years to see that intersection at Providence Point completed. Right, to have a traffic light. Actually, we had it on the tip for at least 15 years. Mm -hmm. it was on the it doesn't bond. seem to get any higher on the list. It sort of sits there. Mm -hmm. There's a pile of money 20 years down. No, it's almost 20 years, it's still not done. Right. And I don't know how you can do that unless you have unlimited funds. You have to increase funding. I don't know how you do that. Oh, but yeah. it would solve all our problems if we found that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Okay, one way of getting extra funding is for the city to work with the legislature to uh, settle the condo issue so that we have condos here in Issaquah with people who are paying property tax. And I'd like to, I think, add to Carl's point. We, the city needs to look at its levels of staffing and possibly hire more people to help Trish? I would third that. I think right now, in many cases, we are understaffed, and that causes a problem in being able to get to not only our aspirational goals, but just meet any kind of a level of service. Yeah, we need to move faster and have better follow through. And I so think I believe uh, City Council was supposed to look at um, hiring and kind of do a survey of why we're having problems hiring or maintaining staff um, along those lines. Well, I know we have just hired some people. Right, some people, but ours decided not to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Again? So we need oh, to no. have this is the first one we've lost. Yeah, we need we to have a survey or some kind of question that's coming up. Why somebody's bailing out at that point? Right. Is it money? Yeah, we all called him. <laughs> no, well, but yeah, it, it was a we tough, need data a on that one. to understand. Yeah. yeah, and Ken, did you have one for this last one? Uh, I have several changes that are needed. Um, we've got. A, and some of these are repeats. Uh, we've got to work outside the, the city on the regional traffic problem. And unfortunately, that sounds like a platitude that we hear all the time. Um, but we gotta get serious. We gotta be the squeaky wheel. And as others have said, it's not just having a little powwow with a couple of cities down south and saying that was a good job. I mean, it, we gotta work not only with the county, but the state, because the solution is really the state roads. It's, it's uh, State Road 18 is probably our most realistic solution. Um, higher development fees. I'll submit to you the Providence Point problem was caused by development. If we had asked them when they developed to design an intersection correctly, we wouldn't have to fix it with taxpayer money. So um, uh, more fees and more stringent oversight, stricter zoning. Uh, update the Issaquah Municipal Code to reflect the comprehensive plan vision. Can I second that one? More postmortems. Our code isn't updated. Oops, sorry. I'm still back at scripture zone. Yeah. Okay. And then 
update the Issaquah Municipal Code yeah. to reflect the comprehensive plan vision. More postmortems on the projects that don't go well. Atlas, Gateway, how did that happen? How do we not make it happen again? And I guess I would leave with the thought that, you know, we really are in the driver's seat here in Issaquah. This is where people, developers, want to develop. They'd give their right arms to be able to develop in Issaquah. You have no you know, um, loss of interest here. So when you have leverage, you ought to get what you want. You shouldn't just concede for mediocre. You ought to expect the highest standards and the things that we all want as residents. He also said don't concede. I like that idea. So is there anything up there that anyone disagrees with? I'd like to add one more, and okay. she's done. Okay. Um, to his point, tougher negotiation stance with developers. Now you're making faces. You really are dropping letters, aren't you? <laughs> I, I, I couldn't read that, I tried. I, I, there's, there's no way. There's, there's I'm really curious to see something. what they look like because I can't see them, so I'm going to get them. Okay, so are we done with the five? Thank you. There's one more thing. Um, if you would like to do an anonymous survey, I put it in your packet so you would have fair warning. It's just for demographics. And then I will secretly put them in this envelope so I won't know any of your answers if you would like to do that. Also, there's the city website has more information on this process. And um, if you want to be in, um, I did, I went ahead and put your, all your names on the sign up sheet, but I didn't put anyone's emails on. If you want to stay tuned to this process, you probably will be anyway, just because I always send you stuff. You probably have me on the, your spam filter, but I just always send you things that I think you all you ought to know about because you guys are so good. Um, but you're welcome to put your email address on here if you would like to um, stay tuned. Other than that, is there anything else anybody wants to add to this? What neighborhood do I live in? I'm on Newport Way, but all the way to Lakemont. Is that Newport? Yeah. That's not. I think, I, don't I, don't think, I think there are questions on here that shouldn't be answered in small groups. That means I'm not anonymous. I'm the only one. <laughs> we, we got our, I've already done it online. I'm going to do it online also. Uh -huh. This is an Uno. <laughs> Trish, what kind of time frame are you looking on this exercise? Beginning of May. Beginning of May. Uh, for how long? Oh, it ends, this first part ends at the beginning of May. And it's May. It's open. The survey's open. The survey's still open, yeah. Trish, and then the second phase, um, I think the whole thing is at the end of the year, but this first uh, information gathering is, I think, May 10th or May. May 8th or 9th, beginning of Something like that, because that's why I had to do the. Chris and I were facilitating this because they didn't have someone to help us. But we couldn't wait another two weeks because we missed the deadline. Okay, so I got everybody's in my secret spot. Thank you all very much, and I think we're done. If you want to do that. Well, um, there's a, on the agenda, there's time for audience comments, but I'm assuming that the audience has already commented. Oh, no. No? This is been what I've been waiting for. Okay, <laughs> and you're on. My opportunity, my five minutes of glory. Thank you. You want to come up to? I will, yes. Okay. Uh, Ken Eastman, uh, resident of Talis and um, Issaquah. Uh, so thank you for uh, being so kind as to let me participate in that last exercise. Um, that was interesting and entertaining, thank you. Um, so I, uh, 
was quite interested in earlier parts of the meeting where you talked about view sheds and you talked about views of squawk and tiger and uh, you probably meant to say cougar as well. Uh, that would be all of our Issaquah Alps. Uh, so I'd like to make some comments tonight on the comprehensive plan and the development of the Bergsma parcel. Uh, for those that don't know where that is, that's on Northeast Cougar Mountain, uh, Newport Way, and pretty close to State Route 900. 40 some up, odd acres up on the steep slopes um, going through uh, permitting right now. Um, you see the Save Cougar Mountain signs all around? That's what that's all about. Uh, that's about 700 Issaquah residents and growing who have signed a petition that says that uh, we're not interested in that being developed, like the city to buy that land. Um, so developing Bergsmo will clear cut 21 acres of that 40 acres, mature forest, going to bulldoze the land, reshape it into flat areas, huge retaining walls, um, and a road that will go from Newport Way all the way to the top of that hill, cut through those steep slopes, put a huge scar on Northeast Cougar Mountain, our gateway into Issaquah. Um, you look at the scar over in the Issaquah Highlands, that's what you're going to see on Cougar. And these slopes are steeper than the hill slide parcel in Talus which is right around the corner. So the comprehensive plan says that in the land use vision on page I-5, as part of our fundamental value and identity of forested character, tree cutting will be minimized outside central Issaquah through stronger protection of the forested hillsides. Protection of our remaining forested hillsides in tree canopy, enhancement on developed hillsides will ensure that the Issaquah Alps will provide forested transition from adjacent natural areas outside their urban growth boundary. And if that's not Bergsma, I don't know what is. So the comprehensive plan is lengthy. It's over 200 pages. There's policies and goals that support that vision. I can quote all kinds of sections in there. And I'm sure you all know that comprehensive plan because I believe you wrote it. and I'm sure you worked hard on it, but it appears as though it's nothing more than an aspirational document because it has no teeth. So my rhetorical question to you is, if the comprehensive plan says that we're gonna protect these forested hillsides, why is the city working with the parcel owner to develop Bergsma? Why is it allowed? Why does it take hundreds of residents on save, with Save Cougar Mountain signs, signing petitions to save that parcel from development. So that's a rhetorical question. When you ask city staff while they're working on permitting, they'll tell you that the comprehensive plan isn't what they use. They use Issaquah Municipal Code, and there's nothing in that code that says you can't bulldoze that hillside, put huge scars on it, build on steep slopes, and put huge retaining walls up there, which is why they're working with them on it. And I have every confidence that if city staff had the tools in the municipal code that said that wasn't allowed, they wouldn't be working on it. So that's my challenge to you. And my real question is when will this commission start to work to translate that municipal, or I'm sorry, the comprehensive plan into real teeth into the Issaquah Municipal Code? So thank you for your time. Thank you. Now I know what those signs are for. <laughs> Can you sign the petition too? I haven't. I might. Um, are there any, anything good for the order? Any comments? Yeah. I'm going to close the meeting at 8.45. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be working on a quorum for May 10th. Sounds like May 10th is a tricky day. Yeah. Is that a regular meeting? No, it's not. It's not too public here. I know, but it's a regular meeting. Right. You're just having trouble. Right.